Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about the final house in astrology, the 12th house. So this is the last video of the houses in, astrology's, uh, houses in astrology series. Sorry about that. Um, I have created a playlist with all the videos pertaining to this series and before you listen to this you might want to go through the previous houses if you haven't seen what they signify yet and what they rule in astrology but let us focus on the 12th house and wrap it up with the houses now the 10th house in astrology has a bit of a bad reputation to say the least that is because um it is said to govern self-undoing, uh, hidden enemies, past lives, our subconscious, so all these super scary things. And a lot of people are actually very put off when they find out that they have planets in the 12th house. That is because to those who do have planets in the 12th house, and if you don't know if you've got any just yet, there are ways to find out. All you need to do is go online to a uh, free natal chart generator. You have to know your date, time, and place of birth and put those in and you'll see if you have any planets in the 12th house, which is literally the last house before the first house and the ascendant. So it is above the ascendant. Now, to those who have planets in there, I mean, I feel you guys, I have Mars in the 12th house and um, I'll tell you what that means. But in general, you might feel like you're being punished for something and uh, you might feel like you are being a bit of a victim throughout this life. And it is up to you to decide whether you remain in that victimhood state or you do something constructive uh, with uh, that type of energy that you are feeling, I don't know, that it looms large over you. But going back to uh, the 12th house, it is also called the house of bondage. It is called the house of helplessness. Um, it is called uh, the house of um, the things that we hide both from ourselves but also from other people and that is almost like a textbook definition in astrology for our inner demons so our fears things that we um don't know and can't control and therefore hold power over us it is called the house of the shadow self and if you've got any planets there then that type of energy um from that particular planet might feel like it's hitting you in the face out of the blue and you don't know how to deal with it you don't know what to do with it you don't know how to embrace it or what to expect from it and it can feel punishing it can feel again like you are being the victim for whatever reason now let us get into a little bit more details as to uh, what the various planets in the 12th house can mean in your uh, life and how they can play out. Now, let's say you've got the sun in your 12th house. Let me tell you this. It might feel like uh, you have no privacy um, because uh, the sun is supposed to shine. And uh, in the 12th house, which is a house of hidden things, of things that we'd like to keep to ourselves, it might feel like there is no place for you to isolate yourself, to retreat, to uh, relax, to unwind, to go away from the world. And it feels like the world follows you wherever you go. It might also feel like, with the, the sun in the 12th house, like you have to sacrifice your ego and sacrifice what it is that you really want in this lifetime for the sake of others. Now, the 12th house has a very strong... Um, sacrificial side to it. It is opposing the sixth house, which is the house of service to other people. And the 12th house is also a house of service, but with no rewards, unlike the sixth house. The sixth house is the house of day-to-day -day work. And the more we work and the more we um, better ourselves and the more we uh, focus on developing our skills and on uh, self-progression, the higher the chances for us to be rewarded in the sixth house. Whereas in the 12th house, it feels like we have to keep on giving, 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 and there is no reward. It's like a bottomless pit. Now, with the sun there, it might feel like ever since you were a child, you were pretty much uh, dis 
encouraged to uh, assert yourself, to um, have your own mind about things, to uh, be pushy about what it is that you want, to uh, take recognition and receive the applause and the acknowledgement for the things that you do well and for who you are. And it might feel like you as an individual do not matter and you have to give yourself up for the benefit of society, um, the collective unconscious, the people around you. So it might feel like you have to sacrifice your ego in this lifetime with uh, the sun in the 12th house. If you've got your moon in the 12th house, not great, can I just say? <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So some of the most spiritual people um, that I have met and that I have also read about happen to have the moon in the 12th house. Now, you might have internalized very early on from your childhood the message that you should not display your emotions, you should not acknowledge your emotions, you should uh, just brush over, gloss over your feelings, and all shall be well. However, we all know what happens when we gloss over feelings and we try to like push them under the rug and we don't take them in consciously and acknowledge the fact that they are a part of ourselves, um, what can happen, happen is a great deal of frustration, a great deal of pain almost, and the hardest part about this placement is that you can't exactly pinpoint where the pain is coming from because the moon is in your shadow house and you're not necessarily consciously aware of the pain and the source of the pain. Having the, uh, the moon in the 12th house can also indicate that uh, you have more or less subconsciously perceived your mother uh, to be a victim and you uh, were supposed to take on the role of the savior from very early on. And if you could not take that role of the savior, then you might have felt guilt. And with the moon in the 12th, the guilt is looming large and you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know how to direct it and you might have a tendency to retreat and sulk and uh, come across as being morose and moody and have this strong innate feeling of having to remove yourself from the middle of people and from the middle of society and go into isolation. The key to dealing with this placement is when you are in isolation, uh, do focus on connecting with your inner self, do focus on connecting with those feelings that you tend to push under the rug and try to get to the bottom of things. And that is going to help you immensely. Now, if you've got Mercury in uh, the 12th house, then as a child, you might have been discouraged to express your opinions, or you might have been made to feel like your opinions are not valid, no, one's, no one cares about them, um, you should not be open about them. They don't matter, and how you think doesn't matter. And that can be, again, a very frustrating position to find yourself in. And now, the advantage of having Mercury in the 12th house can be a very, very strong intuition. It's as if you can tap into the collective unconscious and you're very good at observing people and you're very good at reading their mind almost. You might have like what they call a psychic ability to read other people's minds. Um, the 12th house is also a very spiritual house. It's a karmic house. So Mercury is the mind um, and it governs the logical mind and how we think and what we think about. So on your mind, there might be uh, loads of uh, occult, spiritual, past life topics, and your mind might keep itself preoccupied with them throughout your life. Now, let's say you have Venus in uh, the 12th house. Again, going back to childhood, because everything starts when we are kids and even before that in past lives. Um, with Venus in the 12th house, you might have been discouraged to um, put yourself forward as a beautiful person. Uh, vanity was probably very much frowned upon. Uh, your aesthetic and the way you looked, so your good looks, uh, might have been overlooked and you might have been uh, completely put off by the people surrounding you, by your parents, by the environment that you grew up in. You might have been completely put off uh, from displaying um, 
this aesthetic sense and your beauty and you might have even uh, been made to feel that you are not beautiful at all which is usually the opposite of how you really are and how you really appear to people venus in the 12th house might also tend to um conceal their feelings uh, especially their romantic feelings towards other people and it can be quite hard uh, for them to uh, express uh, what they feel because it's hard even to acknowledge in front of themselves that they do have feelings for some people and last but not least with venus in the 12th um romantic affairs behind the scenes can also be the norm because the 12th house is the house of everything that happens behind the scenes so it's not in the public eye it's not out there for everyone to see and we tend to hide those things consciously or more often subconsciously now with mars in the 12th house guess who's got mars in the 12th house uh, as a child um you were probably uh discouraged from uh, expressing your anger uh, asserting your individuality again uh and in this way mars in the 12th is very much similar to having the sun in the 12th um you might have been uh, made to feel like you shouldn't openly fight for things and building relationships and not uh, alienating people is much more important than fighting for what you want and uh, expressing your will and putting out there that energy needless to say having this placement later on in life can uh, lead to repressed anger and um, people with mars in the 12th house might have a tendency to burst out of nowhere or at least that's what it what it seems like to people around them but actually they have been amassing anger and frustration and pain and um it might have felt like they were cut off from what they wa what they really wanted to do and their initiatives were somehow curtailed by, by other people more often than not it's the person themselves who actually curtails their own initiatives so put yourself out there express those feelings express that energy and that will to live because you don't want to live a frustrated life do you know <laughs> now if you've heard of uh, michelle goclan uh, you might have heard of the uh, so-called mars effect i'm hoping i'm not making uh, the name of it uh, up but there is a thing there's a study that was uh, conducted by uh, Michel Goclan um, in the 1970s and uh, they actually noticed that uh, people who have Mars in the 12th house but closer to the ascendant, so allow like a small orb of like four or five degrees, uh, are actually very likely to become professional athletes because they're very competitive and uh, they can uh, express that energy and that drive in a sports slash games uh, environment very very well so if you do have mars in the 12th house then um do follow th that uh athletic ambition if you have it now let's say you have jupiter in the 12th house well you're actually quite lucky can i just say this <laughs> uh jupiter in the 12th house is um more often than not um the guardian angel placement so whenever something happens to you it might feel like you've got the cavalry coming out of nowhere and saving you in the nick of time now isn't that convenient however on the flip side um you might uh, actually uh, create crisis for yourself and place yourself in um dangerous situations uh the danger can take various forms, various shape or, uh, shapes or forms. And that's how you take advantage of this guardian angel placement. And it can be a bit of a subconscious thing. You're, you don't actually realize that you're putting yourself at risk. You are lucky, but you have to find a way to balance out these two types of tendencies i would say with jupiter in the 12th you might again have a very strong attraction towards the occult towards uh subconscious subconscious uh life uh towards dreams towards interpreting dreams and this is also the type of person who might conceal 
their true faith and I'm talking about like religion, philosophy, political faith from other people and you might keep it to yourself and that's what gives you power and strength to carry on on a day-to-day -day basis. Now let's say you have Saturn in the 12th house, the great malefic in a not-so-friendly house, can I just say? <laughs> and when I say uh, that the 12th house is not friendly, I'm purely referring to the fact that if we have karmic debts to pay, then we will have to pay them through the 12th house. If we have karmic re rewards to reap, then yes, the 12th house is one of the houses that will likely um, put the reward, put those rewards out there for us. Out of nowhere, it's literally like we strike gold and we haven't even done anything for it. With Saturn in the 12th house, you might feel like you have to pay the rent for life. Uh, the um, guilt feelings are usually quite strong with this placement and they might have something to do with um, the father or the paternal figure in your life or with authority figures in general. There are people with Saturn in the 12th house who have to uh, give up on their dreams and let's say for instance uh, look after a uh, sick uh, parent. Um, it will feel at least for part of your life that you have to give up on who you are and you have to give up on what you uh, desire and what your uh, dreams would be in order to focus on the nitty gritty and the mundane side of things and building things from scratch. You might feel like you have it harder than other people and it might feel like someone is out there to get you, but it's actually you who's out there to get yourself because the feelings of guilt the frustration, the fact that you are not chasing your dreams because the 12th house is also the house of dreams is usually down to yourself. We always have a choice. So no matter what happens, we always, always, always have a choice. A good way to channel uh, Saturn in the 12th house is to make yourself of service to other people and uh, be content with the fact that that is your duty. You might uh, actually um, develop yourself professionally or take jobs in institutions because the 12th house is also the house of institutions such as hospitals, uh, prisons, libraries and you might also for a period of time throughout your life isolate yourself on purpose from the rest of the world. For some people who have this not so, who have Saturn not exactly uh, well aspected it is also a possibility that you are going to be forced to uh, retreat from uh, the world and uh, give up your power and give up your ego and give up everything that you've worked for. It's gonna all be crumbling through your fingers. And ultimately the purpose of this is to realize that we are more than materiality, we are more than our ego, we are more than our achievements and we can always start building up from scratch. Now if you have Uranus in the 12th house, hmm, now this is a very interesting one, um, a very strong attraction to the occult, a very strong inclination towards um, the occult side of things and towards understanding the essence of life is uh, possible with this placement. You might have also internalized very early on the message that it's not okay to show off the fact that you are different and that you are weird in some way and you were not allowed by society, by your parents, by the environment that you grew up in to fly that freak flag high. So someone with Uranus in the 12th house might actually appear to be quite conventional, but behind closed doors, you'd be amazed at what it is that they are hiding. But you have this internal fear of putting your real self out there for the world to see because that was not the message that you got very early on in your life. Now, let's say you have Pluto in the 12th house. You might, <laughs> you might uh, choose to hide from other people um, your power and uh, especially your secrets. Um, and obviously because they are secrets, you're gonna be like, of course I want to hide them. But you might obsessively try to hide without even realizing how much effort you put into it, you might obsessively try to hide your true self and 
what you really believe in and what you really want to do with your life and how you would like to transform your life, uh, you might go to incredible lengths to hide all these things from people. A very strong um, attraction towards um, psychology and again, the occult. So you might have noticed a pattern. Most people who have 12th house placements usually do have an incl inclination, a stronger than usual inclination towards uh, the occult, past lives, esotericism, because that's just the way it works. We're looking for answers when we have planets placed in karmic houses, such as the 12th house or the 8th house or the 4th house. We are looking for answers outside ourselves and outside the material world and outside the uh, scientific uh, world and outside what is tangible because we realize very early on that not everything in this life is uh, happening in a logical scientific way. Life is unfair, things hit us out of the blue, um, our life uh, can be turned around, um, we can go through uh, dramas, um, incredible amounts of pains and we haven't inflicted any pain on other people. So that's why we look for answers outside. Now, if you've got Neptune in the 12th house, then this is a fantastic placement for an artist, can I just say, because you can tap into the collective unconscious and channel emotions from all people and from masses of people because the 12th house is also the house of the collective unconscious. It is the house where the ego is dissolved and you can channel this incredible amount of energy and feeling into creating something. However, people with Neptune in the 12th house might also, um, if they don't have this uh, channel to um, express uh, what it is that they are feeling and um, what it is that they are tapping into spiritually, creatively, then you can very much try to escape from the world and try to hide from the world and um, turn yourself into the victim and think that you are some sort of sacrificial lamb. And I can see why it's easy to feel that way. But the key here, again, is to try to channel in a good way, in a way that is of service to others and in a way that not necessarily serves yourself, but the rest of the world, all these feelings. So, um, my dear Written in the Stars uh, followers, if you have any other questions about the 12th house, please feel free to uh, send them my way. I'm hoping you have enjoyed the houses in astrology uh, series and stay tuned because there is more to come a new series maybe who knows see you guys bye